time for our spotlight on Paramount. Joining me right now, Jamie Lumley, senior analyst over at Third Bridge. So now, after the exclusive talks with Skydance Laps, and now they can go out and talk to the other suitors, which include um, Sony and Apollo, where do you think this is headed and how quickly? It's a really good question because if we just think about the last week, Paramount's been going through a tumultuous time. As you highlighted, the Skydance exclusive window with Paramount ended on Friday. Right now, we know that Paramount's uh, committee is considering both the Skydance bid as well as this new one from Sony and Apollo for $26 billion for the full business. And there are a couple of key things to think about here. In terms of the timeline, what we know for Paramount, uh, last week, Bob Backish, exited as CEO. They're currently with an office of the CEO with three leaders. They have these offers on the line. They're trying to manage competing interests of both controlling shareholder Sherry Redstone, as well as the common equity holders. And it seems like this business is ready to have this Rama be over and to finalize a deal. Um, and the big question is whether or not the offer from pair, excuse me, from Sony and Apollo is attractive enough for them to get something done soon. And it looks like, I mean, the, the Skydance talks just lapsed for exclusivity. Um, those are still ongoing, right? I mean, do you think there's going to be, you know, what's the likely outcome in your opinion, if any? So the Skydance, it's a good point to mention, they are still in this. It's not like their bid has been fully right. put to the wayside, but clearly there are some challenges in looking at uh, the attractiveness of that deal. There was a sweetener added in about a week ago, raising the uh, in cash injection to about $3 billion for both paying down debt and then also managing the balance sheet. But there are also some structural challenges which don't have all the shareholders happy. If we think about the mechanics of this, there is the acquisition of National Amusements, the controlling owner of Paramount, and then the reverse merger, having that body then acquire Skydance, is not as appealing to all shareholders who may look towards the Sony and Apollo deal of just acquiring the full business and then combining the studio powerhouse of Sony with Paramount and then potentially revitalizing that streaming business as potentially more attractive. There is, of course, the one wrinkle here of regulatory concerns, as there are definitely specific ownership rules over what happens with a network like CBS. But given uh, the involvement of uh, Apollo, a U.S.-based entity, there are definitely ways which they could work through that and have this deal still uh, come to pass. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned CBS. I mean, we should sort of backtrack and really say all the things, so many things under the Paramount umbrella, which include Nickelodeon, uh, you mentioned CBS, uh, Paramount Pictures, MTV, just to name a few. And I guess one of the headwinds would be the cord cutting, um, right? Is that part of the issue? Yeah, so certainly if you look at Paramount, it's a diverse business. It has the legacy, very famous studio segment. It has it's a variety of assorted cable assets. It has a network. And within streaming, it's not just Paramount Plus, it's also Pluto. There are a lot of moving pieces here. And one of the hurdles for Paramount today in getting a merger through is the fact that not everyone wants to own all these cable assets. Not everyone wants to run a network because that uh, comes with a variety of other challenges as cord cutting is continuing. What we've been hearing from our experts at Third Bridge is that if we just look at the pace of cord cutting today, last year we saw about 7 or 8% cord cutting uh, in the U.S. in terms of attrition of that base. All signs are that's going to continue at a roughly similar clip this year. So it is, again, a melting ice cube for that type of business. So while uh, potential uh, acquirers look at the benefits of getting the studio, getting this library of content, and a nearly uh, profitable streaming service in Paramount+, Plus, they also have to understand how willing they are to get into a business which, on the linear side, continues to face some very serious challenges. Yeah. I mean, so many names being thrown around, of course, James Cameron, Ari Emanuel backing David Ellison. And also, um, so I think it's always interesting when you start to hear all the bigwigs. At the same time, I think about Paramount's con controlling shareholder, and that's Shari Redstone. And she prefers um, the Skydance bid because she believes it would actually likely result in fewer regulatory hurdles. What say you about that? So there certainly is a regulatory piece that I have to worry about foreign ownership uh, in that scenario. But then there's also, again, the competing interests of various types of shareholders. Let's not forget that Paramount is a dual class shareholder structure. 
um, with uh, Sherry Redstone owning the majority of voting shares, common equity holders having the minority. And because of that, there are some tensions here in terms of who gets the better deal. While there is certainly the regulatory piece, there's also the argument for what synergies look like combining with Skydance, which let's not forget is who Paramount partnered with, with key franchises like the Mission Impossible series, as well as massive movie hits like Top Gun. There are definitely some synergies there. But then you also look at the fact that under the Skydance deal, uh, the payout for National Amusements for Sherry Redstone is a little bit sweeter than it would be under the Sony and Apollo deal. So while there's definitely that piece, uh, it's worth kind of weighing exactly who ends up benefiting the most on top of the ultimate income or impact for this business um, as it continues into the future. And so at this point now, I guess we have to wait and see. Very interesting to hear um, from Buffett and the Berkshire Hathaway team that they actually sold off all the Paramount stock. Um, I know you're not here to comment on the stock, but what did you think about the fact that he just didn't see value in it anymore? Well, I think every single company's management team is never going to like the headline that Warren Buffett is no longer a shareholder at their business. And certainly it looks, I mean, it could mean a couple of different things. Uh, overall, it could just be in confidence about where this business is going. Uh, but it's also important to remember, you know, what the story is of Paramount outside of just one individual investor. This is a business which is going through a tough time, but it has so much potential uh, to potentially make this transition. Right now, the streaming business, the key focus of all these legacy media companies, it had its operating losses last quarter. It's funny because we think about earnings were reported last week and almost nobody's talking about the underlying performance. Yeah. Everything is focused on these uh, M&A talks. There are a couple of positive signs there. There's a bit of a recovery due to the Super Bowl um, in terms of advertising. The streaming business is making some progress. So even though, you know, Buffett is out, there's still a couple of things which right. could help business get on a good path. Yeah. You want to give me 10 seconds on Disney? Obviously, earnings this week. Anything we should be watching? We think about Disney and Netflix and some of these names as some of the leaders in the group. Disney, quickly. What are you watching for? Absolutely. Everyone wants to know if there's any more color on succession. There's certainly a lot of names in the fray. Dana Walden seems well positioned, but everyone wants to know if there's any more clarity, any more sense of that timeline, as that will have a huge impact on the trajectory of that business. Jamie Lumley, Third Bridge, thank you so much. Great to see you. Appreciate it.